it's fine to see to have spectators in Morocco or, or in, in the mm. Gulf or Europe, but what you want to have is people who actually have the potential to go to the street and to stand on Tahrir. Uh, did these people, uh, Mahmoud, uh, get their information through the mainstream media, through Al Jazeera, or through whatever they were watching, and did this encourage them to go and demonstrate, or was it you? In Egypt specifically, <clears throat> because they shut down the internet before the 28th, they actually forced the Egyptian people to sit down and watch TV. You know, we didn't have cell phones, didn't have internet, didn't have Facebook, didn't have nothing. So we had to get our information through El Arabiya, El Gizira, and the fantastically misleading Egyptian state television. Which <laughs> Who actually <laughs> said, yeah. at one moment, the Egyptian te uh, state television said, don't watch Al Jazeera, they're telling you lies. And that was the moment when, when, when even the last person in Upper yeah. Egypt would switch over to Al Jazeera, right? Exactly. But, but here's the thing, some people actually believed Egyptian television. I mean, uh, when when the internet came back and we had to go down the street and you know and uh, during like the, the what is now affectionately known as the the day of the camel battle, or the day after when you know when me and hundreds of others in downtown got ambushed and attacked by the police, mm -hmm. uh, people actually believed that there is um, that there is a conspiracy. Egyptian t television media. Uh, said that there is a conspiracy, and if I can get this correctly, it was a Muslim Brotherhood, uh, Israeli, American, Iranian, Qatari, uh, Hamas, all natural conspiracy, allies. and Syria. Syria was in there as well. The Freemasons? So, no, I, 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 no, that came later. Well, Ghanim oh, is apparently okay, also good. a Mason, besides being a communist and an Islamist. I still can't figure it out. It's like <laughs> Obama. So, it's... Uh, so it's that kind of misinformation, it, uh, but it, it brought the issue to light. And it also made a lot of Egyptian people really wonder about like, how important you really were. You know, for the longest time, you believe that you're insignificant, that you're living on the glories of the past, and suddenly you're watching TV, and stock markets are crashing, and oil prices are rising, and, and the whole world is watching, and you don't know, and you, can, and you have no grip of it because you're in it, and you have no perspective on it immediately. Dr. Mohammed, did the people who uh, were connected to the internet actually make the revolution in Egypt? Or w was it probably the people that went on strike in Suez and Ismailia that you know stopped the, S the Suez Canal from running, that went on strike in the factories of Mahal Kobra? What is who, who was the main, the, who, who has the merits for this revolution? The point is that uh, social media are very good in the sense that first they manage the distribution of information, discursive communication, and then the second uh, dimension is, or the function is to to, to start the conversation, and that's very important because conversation in, in, the, in the digital age is important than the information. And the third dimension is the management of identity. Individually, you mentioned it, that the revolution was by individuals, but also by the collective action, because without the collective action, there, should, there can be no, let's say, no big events. And the last thing I, I think is the, also the networking. I would agree with this. Oh, and usually, no, yes. usually when I say this, it's people asking me social media. I'm like, no, because the moment they shut down the internet, we had no access to Twitter, we had no access to Facebook, and we had no access to cell phones either. But they forgot one very important thing, that Egyptians are natural social networkers. I mean, if you know, yes. if you know any Egyptian, they go anywhere, they know at least five people anywhere. Yeah. And, like, and that's how we managed to get other people and increase the number in 28th and later on, and so on and so forth. Isn't, and that, isn't that an Arab virtue to, it is. to be a social networker anyway than to... To, I mean, did, 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 did the Arab world really need these uh, media tools to... Yes, they need. But I'll tell you what, we have an Arab saying says, I'll try to translate it, it's like a straw that broke the camel back. We say it in Arabic for Arab speaking, When we say this, it means that already people are boiling like lava in the earth crust. Before Volgano. People are boiling. So when they found uh, like uh, these social networks in their hands, like Facebook, etc., I would say it accelerates and facilitates people who want to make this revolution, to make this change. They find these kind of social networks to contact each other, to call for revolution, to call for demonstration, to call upon people to go on streets, etc. So I wouldn't say that Facebook or any other channel that is the reason for erupting any kind of revolutions. This is, we, we will be unfair with these people who really made this. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't want to uh, bother you with anecdotal evidence, mm -hmm. um, but I attended, the, the, as I said, the Tunisian uh, revolution. But um, I was extremely surprised by the number of rumors that was 
that spread around very, very rapidly and that had, could have had fatal consequences. People were, and they were saying it on Facebook and they were tweeting it, that uh, Ben Ali had uh, European mercenaries that would walk, walk around and they were armed and they would shoot at the, at the opposition. Um, and it, it some guy even said they had on Facebook they had, they had German mercenaries. So the day I arrived, I arrived with the news that people in Tunis were looking for German mercenaries that were armed and they would uh, you know, fire, fire in favor of Ben Ali. Uh, how susceptible is, the, is our social media to rumor and how, how can they be manipulated? Because any, any force can do that, right? We, we disseminate information, but people, the, what, what I call the uh, informal networks, for instance, in mosques, in, uh, in, in, in places, they, uh, they, they, they verify the information. And then they start from there, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, but still, from another perspective, uh, the information distributed uh, in Facebook and social media in general are not reliable.